The final horn has sounded. And today's game is complete. Time now for Cougar Post Game Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's your host, Jason Shepard. BYU men's basketball, the season coming to an end tonight, losing to number two seed Stanford at Stanford, 72-63. to Congratulations on a remarkable season for the BYU Cougars. And Shaylee Gonzalez, man, what a performance. 32 points, career high. She was fantastic. Future is bright for not only for her, but for the BYU women's basketball program. All right. We're going to go kind of quick. want to get you back to Stanford. There's a post-game press conference uh, with BYU coaches and players heading up to the podium. So we're going to try and make our portion brief. Let's update you on other action from earlier today in the NCAA tournament on the women's side of things. Baylor defeating Cal 102-63. to The other number one seed, Notre Dame, defeats Michigan State 91-63. to One of the upsets today, six seed UCLA defeating Maryland 85-80. to It was NC State over Kentucky 72-57. Four seed Oregon State taking down five seed Gonzaga by six, 76 to 70. One of the other upsets, 11 seed Missouri State defeats third seed Iowa State, 69 60. Stanford went off face Missouri State in the Sweet 16. Also, six seed South Dakota State defeats third seed Syracuse, 75 to 64. Coming up on the other side, we'll let you know how Jimmer did in Salt Lake City as the Jazz host the Phoenix Suns. Your final tonight from Stanford, 72 63. We'll have more Cougar Post Game Live coming up on the other side on BYU Radio. This is Cougar Post Game Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Stanford defeating BYU tonight at Maples Pavilion, 72-63. to Welcome back in to Cougar Post Game Live. We'll get you back out to Stanford coming up in just a few minutes. We're expecting head coach Jeff Judkins and some BYU players to head to the press conference room. We will let you hear from the BYU Cougars coming up in just a second. Do want to update you on one other score in college basketball. Second round of the NIT tonight in Boulder. Uh, Four-seed Colorado taking on eight-seed Norfolk State. The Buffaloes getting the win by 16-76. Six to sixty. All right, to the NBA. We're going to give you one score tonight. Has to do with the Utah Jazz and the Phoenix Suns. Well, why are we giving that score? Well, I know we had a lot of Jazz fans listening here on BYU Radio, but also because Jimmer was back in town, finally back in Utah, playing in an NBA game. The Jazz get the win, 125-92. Jimmer in the loss, did play 14 minutes, got a standing ovation by most of the crowd. I know head coach Dave Rose and his wife Cheryl were in attendance. Saw Robbie Bosco there. I'm sure there were a lot of other BYU dignitaries uh, that we did not see. Jerem Jordan was there. He's telling me on the other side of the glass to make sure I mention his name. Uh, He was there, and yes. And by the way, speaking of that, tomorrow on BYU Sports Nation, right here on BYU Radio, you'll be able to hear from Jimmer because of the hard work by one Jerem Jordan, who was in attendance tonight. But I digress. Jimmer Fredette again, 14 minutes, was 1 of 10, finished with 6 points, 0 of 5 from 3, 4 for 4 from the free throw line. And uh, it was a crazy scene. I was just watching it on TV. Towards the end of the game, the game was done. The Jazz were going to win. Phoenix was going to lose. Everybody just wanted Jimmer to score. And there were a couple of really good looks, just didn't go down. Uh, but the Jazz get the win, 125 to 92. Jimmer with six points in his return to Utah and the NBA. All right, that's a wrap for Cougar Post Game Live. After the break, we're going to get you back to Maples Pavilion for the Cougar Locker Room Show. Your final from Stanford. BYU falling to the number two seed Stanford Cardinal by a final score of 72-63. And you heard it all right here on BYU Radio. Let's get you back to the Bryant Heating and Cooling Comfort courtside seats and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. And tonight's post-game press conferences will be our Sport Court courtside interviews. They're brought to you by Sport Court. Champions start here. Learn how to design yours at sportcourt.com. Welcome back to Maples Pavilion. Venue that uh, tonight uh, hosts its th- 73rd women's NCAA tournament game. No other venue in this country has hosted more NCAA women's tournament games than Venerable Maples Pavilion. And, man, the Cardinal play well here as expected. 18 consecutive now NCAA tournament wins on this floor. They go to 38-4 and all time in NCAA tournament games played on their home floor. And uh, one of the secrets to getting to 12 straight Sweet 16s is to play the opening weekend on your home floor. And the Cardinal make it count once again, Kristen, uh, going 2-0 and this weekend, taking care of UC Davis, and then getting a battle from BYU as the Cougars fall tonight, 72-63. to Let's, before we hear from Kristen, get into the press conference room. Coach Jeff Judkins and BYU players at the podium. 30 minutes 
to ask a question, we ask that you raise your hand and we will get a microphone over to you. We also ask that you state your name and affiliation before asking a question. We'll begin with an opening statement from Coach Judkins and then ask that you direct your questions to the student athletes first before we begin with questions for Coach Judkins. Well, first of all, um, I'm very, very proud of my team. Um, I really th- felt that they came out with a f- lot of fight and um, did the things that we needed to do. We just had one bad quarter, probably bad eight minutes that really hurt us. And against a great team like Stanford, you just can't afford it to do that. You can't have those elapse that, that long. But I'm just I'm just really proud of them. We're We're young. This is something that we've been working hard for and to be able to be in the tournament and come and play at Stanford uh, where they've only lost one game this year and compete, you know, like they did, um, is, makes me really, really proud of them and know that we've, it's just a start for us and we're going to continue to get better. And um, Stanford's a very good team, very seasoned, well coached, and um, someday that's where we're going to be. There's no doubt in my mind. We're just going to keep working. But we, we love this tournament. It was a fun time being here. Our team grew in so many different ways to make us a, a, a better team for the, for the next few years. And uh, like I said, I, I love coaching these guys. They've, they've given all what they need to. They've been, a, they've been hard workers and done whatever they need to for this team to win. So thank you. Questions for the student athletes? Right over here. Michael Robertson, African-American athlete. Uh, Shaylee, freshman, and you had this tremendous game. Uh, perfect from the three, perfect from the line. Disappointing loss, but how do you feel about the way you played in your first year? Um, you know, it wasn't just all me. It was my team, too. They were the ones who were getting me open and setting screens for me and just playmaking and spacing. Um, you know, it's an amazing experience to be where I am at right now, and um, I feel very blessed and very honored to be with this amazing team and um, amazing coaches that make me better on and off the floor. Hi, Damon Esper. I'm local, but writing for the Salt Lake City Tribune. Uh, Shaylee, I, I wish I could articulate this better, but I mean, it was just such a tremendous game. You were talking yesterday that Stanford had recruited you a little bit and that you felt motivated by that. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I mean, was this kind of a, I'm just as good as those kind of national recruits that they get kind of thing for you? Or? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, coming into this game, I, like, like you said, I was re- being recruited by them, and I just wanted to prove myself and show that, like, even if you're a freshman, you can do anything, and it doesn't matter if you're a senior or a freshman, like, just work hard, work your butt off, and um, it'll pay off in the end. Shaley, how much can a, a game like this where you kind of get to measure yourself against a program like Stanford, not just you personally, but the team, how much can this motivate you guys next year? Um, this will motivate us big time. You know, um, coming into this game, we knew that it was going to be tough. And as a number two seed, we knew that they were going to um, – we just know that they're going to hit their shots and we got to work in the post. And I think we, we played very well against them. Um, Like Jetty said, I think the third quarter was our um, worst quarter where we um, were being kind of selfish. And I think that fourth quarter we we got back and we were playing good defense and scoring. And um, just that energy that was was brought was um, very helpful for us. Also, I think that this loss, like she said, like motivates us for next year because we know that we want to be a team like Stanford, like where we want to host at our at the Marriott. So we know what work needs to be done this summer, and we were motivated to do it. For both of you guys, uh, did Stanford change up anything defensively on you guys in the third quarter, or was it just you guys kind of start, started missing shots there? I think not only did we miss a little bit of shots, but we kind of started getting a little bit tired. And with Stanford, we can't afford to be tired. We have to, like, keep up our energy and be consistent the whole time. So I think getting a little tired and being selfish um, is what caused the drought a little bit. Mm, 
Jasmine, we've talked all year about how young this team is, and you guys are returning every active player, I think, except one, Kaylin, who's graduating. But is that any any bit of a consolation? I don't want to talk in like moral victories or anything, but is it a little bit of a consolation knowing that you guys can keep growing? You've got another year together to kind of gel and come together and, and that sort of thing? Yes, like we know that this is just the beginning. It's just the start. We got a little bit of a taste of the NCAA, and we know that we want to keep coming back here consistently for the forever. So we know with this young team that um, we can only get better from here. Jasmine, can you talk a little bit about Shaylee's development? I mean, a freshman comes in obviously immensely talented, but you know, to come through the season and get to the point where she can have this kind of game, 30 two points against the sixth best team in the country, if you believe rankings. I didn't even know she had 32 points, to be honest, but good job, Shaylee. That's amazing. Um, Shaylee has really grown this whole year. She's really taken to heart what our coaches and even us as teammates have said to her. She really listens well and tries to adjust her game. And I think that's honestly like what's helped her is being like open and listen. Like She knows she's a good player, but listening to the, her teammates and her coaches is what helps her game develop to be even better. And she's only going to get better from here. So we're so blessed and we're happy to have her a part of our team. Thanks, <laughs> Any other questions for the student athletes? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. See you, ladies. We'll now continue with questions for Coach Judkins. Tom Fitzgerald, San Francisco Chronicle. Jeff, uh, the players were saying that fatigue and selfishness, uh, I don't know, were problems in the third quarter. What did, how did you see it? I think what Jasmine, <clears throat> excuse me, I think what Jasmine said was um, Stanford's really physical, and they're physical on – us coming off ball screens with using their body and pushing and hitting us. And I think after a period of time, it sometimes wears you out more than running up and down the court. It's just hit it, getting hit constantly. It's kind of like an offensive lineman that just keeps hitting the guy. And eventually the defensive line gets slower and gets tired. Um, we're not used to it. Um, in our league, surprisingly, those refs, ref Pac-12 in our league, they don't let us get as physical as that. And I think it affected us tonight where we weren't used to it. And um, I, I know right now when I talk to them in practice that you got to cut harder, you got to be stronger, you got to be more balanced. They're going to listen a lot more to me now because that's what I'm talking about, teams that are physical doing it. Um, I really thought Shaylee personally, she missed some shots that she usually doesn't miss. And part of it was just getting hit and not being able to – to finish that, but what a great! I didn't realize she had that many points. I knew she had a good game, but 32 is pretty pretty sweet for a freshman in a tournament against a very very good team. Um, but I think that's that's where we need to do better. Uh, we've got to get more inside presence tonight. We just couldn't get the ball inside like we like we we should, and I think that hurt us too. Brandon Gurney from the Desert News. Uh, Paisley picked up her fourth foul uh, pretty early in that third quarter. How did, how did that affect your play? It really hurt us because um, her sub is is Maria, who's a 5'8 point guard, has to go in and try to battle Smith and all these monster players in there, and that that's, that just hurts us. Um, no matter how much Maria wants to compete, it's you know when somebody's taller, they're just going to get the rebound over you. Um, so that, that affected us tonight. Um, Paisley is, is, you saw the first half, is a really explosive player. and She's not used to that. She's not used to people being as physical as she is. And I'm sure after this game she'll, she'll see that, uh, you know, you got to be in a little more balance when you pull up on your shot. Don't rush it and do some of those things. And then not, not create dumb fouls in a, in a, in a, in a big game like that. But. Um, Paisley's been a solid kid all year, and um, she's really kind of been the, the physical player on, on our team. So, so Coach, uh, Mike Robertson, um, African-American athlete. Um, Brenna had a good game last time against Auburn, but she was scoreless for uh, most of the game until those two threes in uh, the third quarter, I think. So what was going on with her? Was it the defense, or was she just off? Um, they did a really good job on her. They – 
they denied her everywhere. They didn't help off her. They, they didn't want her to shoot, bottom line. And um, Brenna needs to use her teammates a little bit better to get open than just cutting. And um, I think that's something that I'm, I can't wait to sit down with her and show her and say you've got to do a better job with that. But the, th- the good thing about Brenna is she doesn't get all upset about it, that she doesn't get shot. She's trying to get her teammates, you know, ready to go, and she doesn't worry about that. But it, re- it really hurt us tonight with her not getting shots that we normally expect from her. She did it, like you said, the fourth quarter, but that third quarter she couldn't get anything, and that's that's something. I tried to run a couple of plays for her, and they just bodied her through the screens, and she just couldn't couldn't do it. She's never going to be the strongest kid out there, but um, if she can learn to, to use her teammates and use Jasmine as a screener and, and run people into them, then she'll be able to get herself free. First half uh, defensively, it was just like the Auburn game. You're, you're disrupting their shots, getting hands on a lot of passes and all that. Uh, third quarter, though, they start to hit a couple of shots. Was that just your, your kids getting a little bit tired, or, or was Stanford doing anything different? Uh, what they, they really overloaded it a lot, and they tried to screen our center, um, Sarah, and try to get some some cuts under, underneath the basket. We got caught a couple of times with that. And then they really seemed to focus more of getting the ball in the corner the, the second half with their threes. And, you know, when Smith's hitting them out there, um, it's really tough. I I really thought that they, they penetrated as good as any team against us in that zone. Um, and that hurt us. We had attacked, and they kicked it, and that gave them a, 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 you know, some shots. Um, you know, I'm playing a 5'10 power forward that has the heart of a lion, and after a period of time, you get tired, and you can't maybe close out as fast or your length, and I think that's kind of what happened a little bit to us tonight. I wanted to play more man because I knew Stanford would do that, but it just we had a hard time really guarding guarding their inside presence, so that's why we had to go go more zone. Jeff, as you, as you take this team into to next year, how much of this game do you show them as a measuring stick? To, like you said before, you, you want to be Stanford, you want to be this way. How much does this game allow you to take that to them? Well, when, when, I'm, when I'm talking to them and, and teaching them in skill development during the, off, you know, during the summer, I think they'll realize that we did get pushed around a little bit. We need to be stronger. They're going to get in the weight room, I guarantee, and work a lot harder for that so they, they can they get hit, they don't lose their, their, their win. Um, but I think more importantly, just the – I don't know if it's a shock, but I think getting here and playing against a real physical team on the road – they only lost one game here. That was against Oregon, and Oregon shut the lights out. Um, to know that they hung with them and just one eight-minute stretch where they just didn't play up to par – cost them the game I think it's going to really help us with our confidence and you know we got a lot of young kids that that this is the first big game of their life and uh, I think they'll really learn from that and and hopefully um, they're they're not satisfied let me put that way they we got done the game they all they'll, they'll be ready to go which I think that's going to help us any additional questions Thank you very much, Coach. Hey, thanks. We really enjoyed being here, Stanford. You did a great job with everything. Thanks, Coach. Judkins, and that's Coach Jeff Judkins and BYU players from the press conference room. We'll take a break. We'll come back at a couple of words from the Stanford side and then conclude our coverage tonight here from Stanford's Maples Pavilion. Greg Grubel and Kristen Kozlowski with you. Stanford 72, BYU 63, our final in the second round of the NCAA tournament on BYU Radio. Let's get you back to the Bryant Heating and Cooling Comfort courtside seats and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right, so welcome back courtside here to Maples Pavilion, Stanford, California. Greg Rubel, Kristen Kozlowski with you. If we're able to get a member of the BYU team with us on headset, we'll do that. We'll have that either and or uh, ducking into the Stanford press conference and get the word from the Cardinal side of things. Stanford wins at 72-63 to over BYU tonight. Kristen, uh, maybe just some, uh, some post-game thoughts after kind of digesting how things went down here tonight. Well, I just think it's difficult. You come into a game like this where Stanford brings in a great crowd. You're on their home court. They're comfortable here. 
it is a tall task. And when you cannot execute and you have those empty possessions, ultimately that's where BYU's downfall was. I felt like they had a lot of heart. They gave it everything that they had. They showed up, and it's a really promising team. They're going to just lose Caitlin Aldridge, but an outstanding performance with their effort. BYU head coach Jeff Judkins uh, popping on the headset for a couple of quick seconds here. We know they've got to get out and get home. They've got a quick flight coming up here. And, Judd, you're able to smile because I'm sure there's a lot of satisfaction in what you saw your team do this season, as tough as it is to lose on this night. Yeah, you know, this is why it's so hard in women's NCAA. You get two home games, don't have to travel, you get calls, you get the fans, um, and that's what you're aiming for. You aim to try to host and you know try to do the best that you can and you know we played one bad quarter and part of it um we don't get to play that physical like that in our league and it's the same refs that's that's what that's what amazes me but we're not used to that and we came out and i don't think we were afraid of it but it wore us down and we got hit and got hit on every pick and then we just couldn't come off it as hard or we couldn't we couldn't shoot on balance because we were hit. Um, but I think they're going to listen to me now because, you know, I tell them things and say this is why you do it this way because you're going to play against somebody that's that's strong and physical. And, you know, Brenna, Brenna likes to float. And tonight she floated and that girl didn't give her a shot. When she started cutting more and trying to get open, she was more effective. And so that will be – a great thing for her. Shaylee, I mean, I didn't realize she had 32 tonight. I knew she was scoring and helping us. Um, but, I mean, just we just think how good this kid's going to be the time she walks out of here. And uh, hopefully our bigs will realize we got to, you know, they're important. They're important to rebound and, and be physical themselves. I thought Jasmine was the most physical of the bigs tonight. we got to have more of that. Uh, Shaylee hit a three to put you up 35-34. That was a 16 nothing run the other way, and that was really the game, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. It was, and, you know, we just kind of started doing too much one-on-one when we got down instead of running our stuff and just letting it work. But that's a tendency of a young team. It, it just they think they have to do it themselves instead of us. And the couple timeouts that I called, that's what I was trying to emphasize to them is, don't force it. Just let it come. Let your teammates get you open. Let the system get you open. And It's easier said than done, but um, that's something that we'll be able to talk about and hopefully help them. As much as you have to let – you you want to win and soak it up, a loss you also have to kind of just let settle in. What is the silver lining for you as a coach going forward into next season with what you're going to have returning and how much this game helped them? Well, we, we definitely got to get a four that is big – and can guard people. We've lost two games this year, two fours that killed us, Huff and Smith. And so if we're going to move up to the next level of teams, the Stanfords, the Yukons, the Notre Dames, you've got to have a four that can guard and can compete in, the, in, in rebounding. And I think we have three freshmen that can do it, and maybe it'll be by committee. But we've got to get better at that. Babalu is the one I think – has the best chance of doing that, but Sig and Mal can really help us if they can get tougher, get stronger, um, be able to guard the perimeter, be able to move better on the five-man motion than just standing there and not knowing what's going on. Um, I think that'll help us. I think, secondly, we've got to get a three that's more physical because Paisley's just outmatched with those, you know, and she's a better two, so we've got to get a three that can bang. Like tonight, if I could have had Talia, she probably could have guarded 21 a little bit and moved Paisley to 24 and rest her a little bit. Um, and then I think we just got to con- continue with our backcourt. You know, Maria had a good tournament. And, you know, she didn't play a lot of minutes tonight, but she played solid minutes tonight. And I think we get her where she can come in and spell those two um, and give them, you know, the rest that they need. I think it will really help our team. So you talk about needing a, a four. There's a different kind of four you want to get. And that's a four seed or better. Because Correct. if you get a four seed or better, you're going to have teams coming to your place. Yeah, yeah there, there's no question tonight. Um, if you ask me, Oregon and Stanford are two seeds, but they could easily be a one seed. For sure. I, I, I think Iowa 
is the other well, the other two seed? I can't remember the other. Yeah, that was Iowa. Iowa. Yeah, was Iowa's one, and I'm trying to think who the other UConn. one. UConn. UConn got a yeah. two seed, yeah. and they had yeah. to have that. Since yeah. yeah. So those those seven teams that you just mentioned, the number ones in those three. I mean, in any given night, they they can beat anybody. I think after that, um, it's a luck of the draw. It's like tonight, um, South Dakota State. Right. They beat Syracuse, and you know, I mean, I, I vote on this mid-major poll and i see south dakota state and i see drake and i see us and gonzaga and central michigan and buffalo and i look at these teams and i say we can be anybody it, it, you know except for those seven that i just mentioned those are the toughest ones to beat and you know and especially at home if you play this at neutral site maybe it's a little bit different i, I know right now i'm gonna try to schedule her I'm going to try to get her to come to Pro Bowl and try to do it. I think that'll help her, help our team. But um, this is just a scratch, I think, of the surface, and that's the point I made at the end of the game. In the locker room is, hey, this is just a start, and hard work this summer. Do the things we need to get sharper, work on things, uh, and know this is where we want to be. I know you as a coach, and it's hard to, to accept losses. It's hard to kind of move on. Mentally, you're going to focus on this for a little bit. What, but what is the next step for those listening? What's the next step you're going to fly home tonight and as a coach and as a team that you take in the next couple weeks and the months? Well, I'm going to first tell them to take some time off and just kind of re, you know, relax and then just let them know that you know the games we lost this year were for these reasons, and we have to change and get better with that. And... Um, just be more more consistent with what we're doing offensively and defensively, and um, we've got to get better play of our of our big scoring. We had no scoring inside tonight, and you know, you can't expect your guards every night to put up 20 and whatever. We we got to get something to the basket inside and get to the foul line and do that. And I think that's something we have to work on. Well, Christian's been with you uh, in the locker room and on the headset forever. I got you kind of late this year, but uh, it was a blast. Thanks for making me feel so welcome and, and uh, being a part of this ride at the very, very end. It was a thrill. It was a thrill. Well, Greg, we appreciate you getting to know these girls. Kristen knows them because she's been around them all year. But right. You know, they're really good basketball players, but more importantly, they're wonderful young women that really are the college athlete. They're fun to be around. Um, as you noticed on this journey, we do a lot together. We do a lot of things with family and administration. We it's a, it is a family to us. That's how we look at it. Um, that's the way I've tried to run my team since I've been here. And um, we're gonna hey we're gonna make some noise. I know that. Well, congrats on this season, which ends where you want it to in the NCAA tournament. A little earlier than we'd have liked it to, but you lost to a great team in a great venue, and uh, certainly got a taste of what's to come. Yeah, I'm two and one here now. Yeah, yeah. Hey. I, was, I was hoping I'd be winning three record. And winning record. Yeah. We're two and one now, calling yeah. it together. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. yep. Well, thank thanks. you guys. Thanks. It was a fun year, and appreciate all the people that supported us. We've had a lot of a lot of people that have been Cougar fans, and I think we've we've excited that. Which is and you gained and you gained a few more. I think a I few hope more, so. a few more uh, hardcore fans I here really, in, the, in the late I, going. I really hope yeah. so. Yeah. Hope we do that. Thank you. Thanks, yep. Judd. Congrats. All right, uh, if there's uh, still something happening in the uh, press conference room with Stamper, we can duck in there for a quick listen. They have wrapped up, or they've already come and gone, or yet to go in. Mm-hmm. All right, Stamper's yet to pop in. So if they pop in in the next second or two while we're wrapping up, we may hear a word or two. Otherwise, we'll wrap it up from courtside, uh, Kristen. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it, you're, you're heartened when you hear, I mean, you know him so well, but uh, you're heartened when you hear uh, what Judd has in mind and how he's reacting to tonight, and you feel for the girls. Um, uh, not their night, but uh, a lot of teams are going to come into this building and take an L against this kind of Stanford team, which is ranked sixth nationally, a two seed for a reason, could easily be a one, as Judd noted. So you focus on the positives and just try to get better and hopefully good enough to be the team that gets a home game on the weekend. Well, and, and these players are all coming back except Caitlin Aldrich, and that's the player I want to touch on. The, the impact she's had on this team was not expected. She comes in as a walk-on. She was a four-time WCC all t- all conference t- player and she just she made such in an a different impact sport. yeah in a different <laughs> in softball and she just you know she made such an impact on this team and and to have just her graduating and everybody else back i mean it's remarkable what they're returning and what they were able to accomplish at such a young age 
So uh, the future is bright uh, for this program, and uh, no brighter star on the horizon than Shaley Gonzalez. Uh, everybody to a person tonight was saying, "Wow, she had 32." They didn't, you know, they, they were surprised the number was that big by the end of the night. But it was a 32-point night on 12 for 21 shooting, made every three, made every free throw. Um, uh, the 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 oft-used phrase, and and I'm sorry if it's too cliche, is "sky's the limit," but that's where she's at right now. She's fantastic, and I look forward to seeing what she does in the offseason because we know she works hard. I mean, the girl has such incredible work ethic, and she comes from parents that know how to win at a high level. I mean, they both played college ball. They helped train her through her high school and her club ball careers, and her future is so bright, and I think Coach Vanderveer saw it over there. And, you know, she sat there squirming a few times because her girls could not shut her down. And so that is a promising future right there in that player for BYU. Okay, I think we're going to wrap it up without uh, ducking into the press room, but uh, Stanford is a winner tonight, 72-63 over BYU. Uh, maybe a closing thought from you, uh, Kristen, then we'll uh, say goodnight and say our thank yous and uh, and end this season here on BYU Radio. Well, overall, Coach Judkins had a fantastic season. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, this was his 12th 20-plus win season. They finish 26-7 and seven on the year, and I personally know Coach Judkins on a different level. I played for him. I followed this team and, and been in depth with him over the years, and so proud of what he accomplished and what these players accomplished. They left everything they had out there on the court. All right. For Kristen Kozlowski, I am Greg Grubel. Again, a real pleasure to be a part of this ride at the very tail end of it. A fun time in Vegas, a more fun time had here at Stanford, even though it ends tonight in the round of 32. The Cardinal on to the Sweet 16 to play, uh, play Missouri State. That will happen next weekend in Chicago. Our thanks to our crew back at BYU Radio. Our studio host, Jason Shepard. Our engineer, Sean Fay. Our uh, intern tonight, broadcast intern, uh, Tess Anderson. Our control board operator, Nathan Israelson. And our coordinating producer, Terry South, thanks as well uh, to Sean O'Neill, Don Shaline, and others back at BYU Radio. So for those folks, and our thanks to Norma Bertach and the BYU basketball media relations staff, uh, Coach Judkins and his players, uh, again, I'm Greg Grubel. Thanking you for tuning in. For Kristen, I am saying in the meantime and in between time, this has been BYU Women's Basketball on BYU Radio. Good night and so long from Stanford. You've been listening to live coverage of BYU Basketball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. BYU Basketball is a production of BYU Athletics in association with BYU Broadcasting. Special thanks to BYU President Kevin Worthen, Vice President Matt Richardson, Athletic Director Tom Holmo, and General Manager of Corporate Sponsorships Casey Stauffer. BYU Basketball is an exclusive presentation of the new skin, BYU Sports Network.